The, the next pattern is a, a little bit a little bit more complicated, but not much. This is called a spent apple caddis. Uh, the apple caddis up in the Catskills um, are a favorite hatch. They, they come after the, the big early season mayflies, but, but uh, before the big drake hatches that everyone loves. Uh, I'm going to use green thread here. I guess I have one of these. Yeah, it, I'm a big guy. Everything's going to wrinkle around me. I'll put the sample one up first. Sorry. Do this out of sequence. Uh, I'm using a TMC 2487 scud hook. Um, there, we'll show the profile of that. Uh, this is a parachute-like pattern, caracatus. It's got uh, green, green body, which is the apple green. This might even be a little too olive, but uh, it's pretty close. You can tie it a little bit more lighter green if you want, but it should be fine dubbing. It's a grouse feather. And, uh, and done hackle. Um, the caddis emerges relatively quickly, but it comes out in big numbers. And, and normally fishing in the spring is, is an afternoon game. But if you're up there in the morning uh, and you get out to the river, you'll see these dead caddis all over the place and fish sipping them in the backwater. And uh, you put that dead floating, floating spent caddis on the water and they'll, they'll sip it up. And you look for the little tiny sipping rises in the backwater that look like minnows. And sometimes there's a, a big head sipping up in that little backwater that, that presents a, a worthy prize up there. Uh, again, attach the thread, wind it to the back of the hook. I'm using, get rid of them, okay. This is uh, Umqua Green Superfine Dubbing. Um, it's just a nice green color. Uh, notice I have a big hunk here. You don't need that much. Uh, you you want to, if anything, as Dick said, they're not tapered uh, bodies. You, you're just looking for a cigar shape. You put the, the dubbing on the thread, kind of get a, a nice even body all the way up. And work your way up to about two-thirds of the way to the eye. You don't want to don't crowd it, and you'll notice I'm leaving some bare hook there. Um, I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but it's how I like to do it. This is a grouse feather, just a regular body feather. Usually you use these for soft hackles. Does that show up on the screen? Mm -hmm. I've peeled off the duff. You're going to just pinch it a little bit. Kind of twirl it around in your fingers to get it right. Move, your finger down a little Move my fingers down. Yeah, it's easier to see without big fingers in the way. How are we doing there? Can, can, they, can you guys see it? Yeah, there it goes. You want it to go to about the, the bend of the hook. And you're going to wrap around twice. And then lift this up. And then bring the thread in to stack it up. One wrap around, and now we have that bare hook that we have to cover. Oh, one more thing. My dun. I'm using a, a blue dun um, hackle feather. For parachutes, I like plucking them from the side of the neck instead of the, the heart of the neck. The heart of the neck is better for those big bushy Catskill dries that you like to tie, but parachutes, you don't want to get too crazy with it. Uh, Bill's actually going to demonstrate a, a really nice parachuting technique, and he's got better props than I do. So uh, we'll, we'll give the details to him, but I learned this from him. I see he's adapted it some. I haven't learned his new ad adaptation, so I'll just tie it the same way I always did. Um, I think he goes the other way around the hook. You get a little bit more dubbing, Even with sweaty hands, just sticks to the, the hook a little bit better. Just bring it up to the eye, then bring the thread back to there. A couple wraps around at the post to give the hackle something to hang on to. I leave the, the thread hanging off the back. Wrap the hackle around this post 
and get every wrap under the previous one. So that you're pushing up. You can pull up if you need to steady it. Make sure you go over the wing, but under the front. And you'll notice that the hackle for this, when you're sizing hackle for parachutes, especially for something like this that you want riding nice and low, they go a little bit bigger than you would for the same size, um, uh, standard size dry fly. You go around one more time, and that's it. Now we just pull everything back, bring the thread up, and whip finish at the eye. Now I don't normally use any head cement um, for most of my flies. However, on these parachutes, because you're cutting away, cutting away the excess hackle here, and this stub of a feather here, how does this look here? Make sure I don't cut anything that I don't intend to. You're going to cut this down so there's just a little bit of a stub left. And then if I have head cement, I'll put a drop of head cement in here. I use the water-based stuff that's really soft. It soaks it right in and it'll seep out into the hackle so that once the trout start chewing on this, the grouse feather gets really ratty makes the fly work better, but the hackle doesn't completely peel apart. And that's it, this is a spent apple caddis. I've also had a lot of luck with this pattern using yellow body, and instead of a hackle, uh, a grouse feather, use um, a zelon, a gray zelon, like a dun color. And it's a really good stone fly imitation. Uh, you wanna, when you're, you, since you're using the scud hooks, you wanna go one size, uh, larger hook. I think this is a size 14 hook for a size 16 fly because the scud hook is a little bit shorter. Uh, but the, you know, this is the trout's view of it. I guess we're looking from underneath. But um, that's it.